Being a data analyst opens up a lot of exciting career paths with even more opportunities and better salaries. Here's a quick look at the average pay of different data analyst roles in the US in May 2021, according to Glassdoor. I've been working in the data science field for almost five years, moving from being a junior data analyst to now being a senior data science consultant. What I thought would be my end goal about five years ago, you know, getting a secure data analyst job at a good company and I would live happily forever after. But it can't be further from the truth and now I understand that it's just one of the very first steps into a larger data career. So in today's video, I'd like to talk about the different data analyst career paths to help you gain some more clarity, especially for those of you who are just starting out as a data analyst and uh, who might want to advance your career in the future. I would also share my experience and some of my views um, to help you make that decision. A lot of people transition into a data scientist. That usually involves advancing your programming skills. For example, you should be proficient in R or Python, knowing object-oriented programming, using big data programming languages like PySpark or knowing how to use machine learning platforms like Databricks. It also involves learning more advanced mathematics like probability and statistics, calculus and optimization, which will help you develop a deeper understanding of machine learning and deep learning techniques. Many of my colleagues took a second master or post master or even a PhD in machine learning, mathematics or computer science. While an advanced degree might not be strictly necessary, having one can mean more job opportunities and better negotiation power when it comes to negotiating your starting salary. One of the key distinctions between a data scientist and a data analyst is that a data scientist job is more geared towards building models to help create predictions about the future. As a data scientist, you also do a lot of things that a data analyst would do like acquiring data, cleaning data, transforming data, and creating visualizations, etc. But the end goal of a data scientist is to identify patterns in data and create models that help us reliably make predictions about the future. Also, the topics of model explainability and model fairness have been under a lot of scrutinization lately, and they also fall on the plate of a data scientist. If you like reading about AI and machine learning, whether it is just for fun or for your interest as a career, um, there's a nice book called The Master Algorithm, How the Quest for Ultimate Machine Learning Will Remake Our World by Pedro Domingos. One of my favorite quotes in this book is, people worry that computers will get too smart and take over the world. But the real problem is that they're too stupid and they have already taken over the world. So as a data scientist, your job is kind of to make sure that computers are not too stupid and if they are stupid and making stupid decisions, then you know why and you know how to fix it. A second career path, which is what I chose, is to become a consultant. Data science consultant, data analyst consultant, data analytics consultant, however you want to name it. The general idea is that instead of working directly for a company, you're working as a consultant for a consulting firm conducting analysis for different clients. You could also choose to become a freelance contractor. That would mean more freedom and more flexibility, but that also means that you have to market yourself and you have to find clients by yourself. To become a consultant in data analytics, usually you need a few years of data analyst experience for a company and that you've built a solid foundation in data analysis technique programming and a portfolio of projects and clients you've been working on. Working as a consultant often means more variety of projects and different types of analysis you're performing. It can be a very valuable experience, especially if you're still learning and developing different skills, including your soft skills like presentation skills, working with clients and different uh, stakeholders. But my work being a data science consultant at a big four company means that I get to work with a lot of different types of clients, in including banks, insurance companies, ministries, and hospitals. I also get to wear a lot of different hats. In one project, I'm a data analyst calculating very simple metrics and building Tableau dashboards. In another project, I'm building like really complex machine learning models with 300 million rows of data. In another project, I'm a software developer creating websites and making apps. One of the benefits of that is that you don't get bored so easily and my my projects usually last maybe three, four, or 
maybe at most six months. So you keep switching to different kinds of projects and you don't have enough time to even get bored. But the downside of that is that you might not have enough time to build very in-depth technical skills um, or even domain knowledge in one specific field. So in the long run, I think it's better to choose one focus area to specialize in as a consultant. The third career path that I want to talk about is to become a specialist in one industry. For example, business analysts work with organizations to help them improve their processes and systems. Financial analysts use data to help guide investment opportunities, identify revenue opportunities, and mitigate financial risks. Marketing analysts analyze market trends to help determine product and service offerings, price points, and target customers. Healthcare analysts analyze patient records, healthcare costs to help care providers such as hospitals and public health organizations improve their quality of care. People or HR analysts analyze employees' data to measure things like attrition rates, sick leaves, and pay fairness, and identify potential causes. Going into this path typically requires that you have a decent amount of domain knowledge, and that usually means a few year working experience in that same industry, and that you understand the structure and the characteristics of that industry. When I was working as a junior healthcare data analyst as my first job, it really took me some time to really understand the healthcare system of the Netherlands and how the hospitals, the governments, different types of organizations and the healthcare insurers, how they actually work together. Well, when I worked on projects like helping an HIV monitoring foundation keep track of the HIV infections in Amsterdam and identify different hotspots of infections, I really had to learn what are the different HIV stages, what are different HIV medicines that are in the market, and how the general practitioners actually work with their HIV patients. So a lot of interesting stuff you get to learn, and if that's something you're really passionate about personally, then becoming a specialist really uh, is probably the best fit for you. Another common career path is to move up to a more senior level and eventually becoming a manager. A next colleague of mine worked as a senior data analyst for a few years before she moved to a municipality to work for the city um, as a team lead of their data science team. It can be a very interesting path if you like working with people, managing projects, and supervising others. Usually, this position would require you to have about four to five years of experience as a data analyst, and some companies require to have a master degree. These four common career paths that I mentioned in this video are by no means complete, and the technology world is changing so fast that it's really far-fetched to say what you should be doing five years from now. But I think knowing the possibilities is really helpful to help you inform your next career move and help you start thinking about what you really want to do for your career and what you really like. Let me know in the comment box down below what kind of career path you're considering and if you have any questions so far. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.